Hi, Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter and here's another interview in my series of interviews with subscribers. Enjoy! Okay, hello everybody. It's Stephen here with The Idiot Quilter for another interview, this time with a Canadian, which I'm really excited about. And I just said to Terry that she right now is on trend because many of my subscribers have suggested to me that I interview Terry. And so I checked out Terry's YouTube channel and it's just well, what she does is just absolutely fascinating, and we can see an example of some of her work right behind her, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But first, this is Terry Rowland. And Terry, where are you located? I live in central Alberta, near Pine Lake. Um, I live on a farm, so I, I farm here with my husband and my daughter and her son-in-law. Um, yeah, I, I, love, I love farming. I love my location. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a great place to live. I'm just thinking, if you're on a farm, and I know that there's a lot of work involved in running a farm, how do you find the time to quilt? <laughs> I fit quilting into my life because it's important to me. Um, if I've got five minutes, I will run downstairs to my sewing machine and I will sew for five minutes. I can fit farm, um, I can fit quilting into my life because it is so important. I'm getting older and my daughter and her son-in-law have, have joined our, our operation. So that has freed up a little bit of time for me. So yeah, I'm, I'm full-time quilter. Okay, well, that's great. But you're, you're right. As we get older, we need to keep ourselves going. And I think quilting is a wonderful way to, to do that. It stimulates our mind, our creativity. It just keeps us active rather than rotting in front of a television set or something like that. Absolutely. So how long have you been quilting then? Well, I, I looked back and, and then started adding the years. Um, it was about 50 years ago I started sewing. Now, as a really tall, long-legged, long-armed um, person, um, <laughs> it was a necessity to, to, to do some sewing just so I could get stuff that was long enough. Uh, so I did a lot of garment sewing when, in my teens. And then as I went along, I enjoyed sewing, took sewing all the way through school, um, right up to grade 12. So did quite a bit of garment sewing. And then once I, I graduated and uh, started a family, I continued sewing, um, sewing crafts more than anything. So, you know, placemats and potholders right. and, and that type of thing. Uh, I also continued doing my garment sewing. And when I, I had left home and was out on my own, I decided I wanted to make a quilt. Was I trained in making a quilt? No. <laughs> So, um, but I made a quilt for my, my bed when I left my, my, my home. I love it. So I continued raising children, fitting sewing in when I could. And once my kids were all back in school, I didn't have any at home and I have four daughters. So um, I, I started quilting and self-taught, um, learning as I go, trying anything I could try. Uh, I just love it. I think a lot of us are self-taught. I know I am as well. After I got into it and I did a few things, then I started thinking, well, maybe I should take some classes too and learn some other things as well. But you have four daughters. Do any of them follow in your footsteps? Do any of them sew or quilt? My oldest daughter has made two quilts from start to finish. Like I didn't, I gave her guidance, but I didn't do any of the steps for her. Uh, but she's raising two young young kids right now so she doesn't have time but she will fall back on it i'm sure um all my kids are gifted in some way or another um but only one is really doing the quilting the quilting yeah so how did you actually get started it was it something that you just picked up when you were a little girl did your anybody in your family so or influence you i had no influences for for quilting in my life um, I just, I love color, I love shapes, um, and I love sewing. So making a quilt was, was easy in, in my, in my, 
my way of thinking. It wasn't a hard step to, to go into quilting. And I, I really do love um, investigating things. I like trying new things. And you'll see that with when you start showing some of the pictures, all of the different kinds of quilting I do. I, I love challenging myself to learn something new. So I'm, I'm always looking for another thing to, to try because you never know when you're gonna find the thing that you're really good at. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, so I noticed this, we were talking about creations, but I have to ask you about the two right behind you because those are, I love bright colors, bold colors, and both of those are very bold. Now, would you call the one to your, uh, well, to my left, yeah, that one. That's the one. Is that what they call a stained glass? Yes, it is. It is a stained glass quilt. Uh, it's not done by a pattern. You can get stained glass um, quilt patterns right. and you cut each of the, the, the different elements in the block the exact same size. Um, this is an improv um, stained glass okay. Um project. So the scraps basically tell you how they want to be put together. And every block is different. Now, this is organized scrap. I have also done this. I've done it three. I've done three of these. <laughs> I did one out of all greens. So different colors, different um, shades, different values of green, and it's beautiful. I did one totally out of scraps. So every like a red one was next to a purple one was next to a green one didn't matter right um, i actually had somebody tell me once um on a quilt that you can't put all of the colors in a quilt oh. well that just challenged me to prove you wrong because i think you can put every color in the quilt and i do that this one because of the black lines that helps you to divide those colors so they're not right next to each other. So if you don't like orange and green next to each other, it doesn't matter because the black lines do the, do the separation for you. This particular one, I'm kind of obsessed with color washes these days. And I did this as kind of a color wash. So having it bleed from the, the red pinks over into the blues, I've sprinkled a couple of the, the colors together in one of the blocks just to transition from one area to another. Absolutely love, love doing stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's, well, it is, it's phenomenal. And when you say you did it as an improv, there may be some people don't understand the process of improv. And it's just essentially, at least the way I look at improv quilting, is just grabbing what you've got and as you said, you let the fabric tell you where you want, where it wants to go. And you, yes. you know, some people are afraid of that in the creative process. I find it very freeing because you very don't freeing. worry about a pattern. Yep, exactly, exactly. Uh, I find it very freeing too. Uh, I consider myself a traditional quilter, but I'm crossing that line into more modern looking. Right. But I still love printed fabric. I, I'm not a solid fabric lover. I, I have a problem sewing with solid fabrics. I have them, but they're not top of the list of, of fabrics I want to use. I, yeah. love the, I love the prints on the fabric. It gives, gives my, my stuff dimension and interest. I love putting sailboats next to <laughs> teddy bears, next to suns. Like, I love that. I yeah. love the texture that that printed fabric gives us. Well, it's very apparent in your creations, especially the texture that comes out in both of those quilts you have behind you. But while we're talking about your quilts, you sent me a few pictures and I'm just going to switch over. Maybe we can talk a little bit about these. And okay. I think, can you see that on your screen? Yep, I can. Okay. So this is the first one, or one of the ones you sent me. So just tell us about this one. This is really is a, a bold statement. It's very bold. I should have sent you two. I should have sent you the first one I made and then this one. <clears throat> the first one I made was all out of gifted fabric. So people give me fabric and some of it is to my liking and some of it isn't to my liking. Right. But I made a whole quilt out of fabrics that 
I wouldn't have picked out of my stash uh, first. So there were muted colors. Um, and anyways, I made that one and I loved it when it was done. Then I, I grabbed all of the fabrics and the colors that I love. And anybody that knows me knows that I love this palette of, uh, of fabrics. Now this, this technique is called Kawandi, which is an ancient technique of building quilts. Uh, <clears throat> it's an African Indian um, technique. So these Africans were made slaves and taken to India to, to, to be slaves. They took their culture and their um, creative way of making quilts with them. And now they make these quilts in India. These quilts are totally hand pieced. All of those squares are put on one at a time and you're basically doing a running stitch all the way around the quilt and you're working from the outside edge into the center. Now, some, some of the, the outer edge of the quilt is more traditional looking. Once you get into that inner um, border area that's got the little triangles, that's where my, um, my excitement started. I added my own type of, of elements to, to make it um, more modern. So the little diamond shapes are not something that's traditional. The little arrows that I added are not traditional and none of those center blocks that are on point are traditional. But I've mixed the two, the, the traditional of the Kawandi to a more modern look. And I love it. Yeah, I, it I call it westernizing, westernizing yeah. the Kawandi. Well, it is. It's actually spectacular uh, the way. And and so you did this all by hand then. Absolutely. Said, all wow. by hand. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, the next one, it, tell us about this creation. All right. Well, when I turned 60, <laughs> I decided to dedicate that year to my favorite color, which is orange. And I, I had been inspired by um, a quilter I know from Lethbridge area, and she had made these multiple blocks, um, but hers were, were, weren't on point. Hers were, were set straight. And it was, her, her quilt was totally um, scrappy. So she had all different colors in it. Mine, I wanted to have an orange look to it. And then just add a little bit of sparkle with um, either value or with a color change here and there just to give it a little bit of life. So this is my year of orange um, diamond quilt. Well, it's it's quite spectacular too. And I love the way that there's a variety in the, not only just in the color, but in the size of uh, the squares that are now set on point as diamonds. And you can see the sparkle in this. And I am sure in real life, it even sparkles more. It does. This looks muted on the screen to me. And so now this one, this looks like this took you some time. <laughs> it took me a while. This is like 100 by 100. So yes, it took me a long time. It has five different sizes of blocks. This quilt was inspired by a girlfriend of mine. I call this one Vanessa's star because Vanessa had made a star all oh, years ago. And I said, oh, I absolutely love it. Her star was blue with an orange around the outside. And at the time when I saw it, I said, oh, I got to make that. And then you know how life gets in the way and you, mm -hmm. don't, um, you don't do it. Anyways, I was uh, sewing with her another weekend and she was making another one. And I said, okay, I got to make it now. So I chose to put the star as the orange and the background as the blue and then swap the center colors. Absolutely love this quilt. Um, it is, it is, it is a gorgeous quilt and there's just you just stand at it and you keep seeing other secondary patterns everywhere. It's, it's, it's almost hypnotic, I think, this one. I, I love that it's got all the different sizes. You have to do a little bit of math when you're doing this. Yeah, and I think the, so. The layout of the, the angled blocks. It's basically a, basically a 16 patch quilt. Right. So I made huge 
16 or blocks to to make this 16 patch quilt right yes i can see where the mathematics that would get me <laughs> that would definitely get me well yes and no yes and no it's yeah. um it's I, I don't have a problem with math. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I like the challenge. <laughs> okay, well, good. I'm glad you're able to do it because, <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to get into my mathematical uh, problems with quilting. So this one too, I love this one. Okay, so that was my 2021 scrap challenge quilt, or one of them. I, I did too. So kind of when harvest starts, I am thinking about finding a scrap project that I can do in between making meals and just to keep my hands busy. Right. Because I'm not busy enough as it is. <laughs> um, so last year, I, I challenged the people that follow my, my page mm -hmm. to make scrap blocks. I didn't care what size they made. I didn't care what design they made. I just wanted them to pull those scraps out of their um, bags and boxes and use them. So I challenged them to make four blocks a day for 100 days to make a small lap quilt, depending on what size blocks they did. Right. Now, my blocks are three and a half inches cut. I knew I was I wanted to make this color wash quilt. I had never done a real color wash like this, and I wanted to make one. So that's what I was making my blocks for. I didn't tell anybody what I was doing. I just showed them four blocks a day for a hundred days. Um, mine, I needed 700 blocks because I made mine <laughs> oversized lap. I'm tall, I, I, a little quilt doesn't go very far in my house. <laughs> so I had made this, there was so, it, it was inspiring what everybody made. I, I love, that they show me um, the different things that they're making. But I had so many comments about how, how did you do this? I love that quilt. I can't believe it's just one block over and over and over. So then this year when fall come around, I thought, why don't I just lead them through making a, a color wash quilt? So I started again with my little blocks. This time I didn't want to have the blacks and the browns in it. I controlled my colors to a point and I did mostly bright colors because my friend Tracy at Purple Cats Quilting had had done this scrap challenge last year and used only tulip pink fabrics mm. and I loved hers it shone so I, I controlled my palette I wanted it brighter and this is the one and I've got it sitting with the, the muted part in the picture but it's got beautiful, um, uh, beautiful colors and it, it really does shine. So this was my this year's scrap challenge quilt. OK, well, I know, too, that you um, have that up on your YouTube channel uh, as well as a tutorial because I watched all of those. I haven't started making one yet, but I do want to make one. So I know that reference is there. And we're going to talk about your uh, uh, web uh, Sorry, or your YouTube channel in a few minutes. But what I want to know is, have you ever um, entered your quilts into a show? And have you ever won anything? Um, I, I enter into my local quilt show. And um, actually, what what's the next quilt that you've got up? Is it the uh, house quilt? Okay, so you asked me if I had entered anything into quilt shows. Well, I enter quilts into my local quilt show, which is the Central Alberta Quilters Guild out of Red Deer. This quilt, when I entered it, it was put in the show right in the very farthest corner from the door. And I was a, a little sad where it was placed because I really wanted everybody to see it. Yeah. Um, and everybody did. And it was right on an end. And as people were walking around and we had our, our quilts set up so that you kind of walk down a row and come up, up another and down a row and come up another. And as I say, it was on the very outside edge of the, the, one, um, the one row. And people would walk around and they would stop just as they kind of came around that corner. And then they would 
start creeping up towards the quilt. And most of us, when we go to a quilt show, there's, you know, two or three of us that are kind of walking around together. And this group of three would kind of walk and creep and they'd get about three feet up and they'd be chitting and chatting at each other. And, and, uh, and then they would say something and I couldn't hear what they were saying. There was a, there was a bench, oh, I don't know, it was about 15 feet away. So I couldn't really hear what they were saying. So I started following people around that corner and right behind them. And when they stopped, I stopped. And when they crept, I crept. And when they got within three feet of it, they'd, one of the people in the, in the group would say, whoever made this quilt is crazy. And I would just lean forward and say, yes, I am. <laughs> it was the most fun I've ever had in my life was just standing doing that creeping with the people yeah. <laughs> and talking about my quilt well this so, is a phenomenal quilt and again another one you seem to like quilts that have a lot of pieces <laughs> I do I do so this quilt means a lot to me because friend of mine, Vanessa, and you've heard her name before. She's yeah. the star lady. Mm -hmm. um, we were at a retreat and she, she comes up to me and says, have you seen that 365 house quilt? I said, yes, I have. Mm -hmm. And she said, do you want to make it? And I said, yep, someday I will. She said, I challenge you mm -hmm. to make that quilt. And I went, challenge on. Mm -hmm. So that meant both of us were going to make it. And we came up with the, the ground rules. We were giving ourselves a year to make this quilt. There's 365 yep. houses in, in the original quilt. Um, but to us, finished is pieced, quilted, bound, sleeve on it, and label within a year. So I knew I had my work cut out for me. Yes. And I, I went home. The lady who had actually designed this was from the Netherlands, mm -hmm. and she, she actually had a rubber stamp that she stamped the, the backside of used clothing, and she cut them out with scissors, and she hand-pieced her whole quilt. Oh. That wasn't my idea of fun. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I drafted out a house pattern, same size. Um, similar. It might be just a little off of what she did, um, but I drafted my own paper piece pattern because I love paper piecing. Mm -hmm. And I started making blocks and I thought if I make two blocks a day for half a year, I'll be done. So my, my favorite time to sew is first thing in the morning. I get up, I have one cup of coffee, I head down to my sewing room. And that's how I do my scrap blocks also. I'll go down and if I've on a mission to get a project done, I go down first thing in the morning. I sew until my husband gets up. <laughs> Sometimes I could get two blocks done. Sometimes I could get 10 blocks done, depending on how early I got up. <laughs> so I, can, I started making these blocks. Now, I go to quite a few retreats. I love the, the camaraderie with other quilters. And I took this project with me. I'm very organized when I'm getting my um, making scraps. So I have little trays of all the different colors of scraps that I can travel with. I put them into a, one of those cloth bags and I can pull out, you know, a couple of trays a day. And that's what I usually do. I pull two trays out. I might have a yellow one and a blue one. I'm going to make some yellow houses. I'm going to make some blue houses. I'm going to make some yellow and blue houses. If you do that, you're going to, your houses are all going to look different. If I went down and had all of my scraps in one bucket, all the colors, you're going to gravitate towards your favorite prints or your favorite colors. Yeah. And your, your blocks tend to look the same. By pulling out two different colors every day, my blocks totally look different. There's not any one that looks the same. So I took this to four different retreats. So at those retreats, I had to make 10 blocks in the morning before I could go on and do anything else. 
that get, keeps me motivated, that keeps me, you know, two steps forward, one step back kind of a thing. Um, <clears throat> when I finished this quilt, I went to those four retreats at the, the end of um, when I had it all finished. And every, several of the people at these retreats would come up with a piece of fabric and say, can you make a house out of this? And I went, yes, I can. So I would immediately make a house out of their fabric. So when I went back to those retreats, they say, where's my house? I said, you're going to have to find it because I have no idea which scrap <laughs> they gave me. Um, and they would look until they found the, the house that had their scraps in it. So it was a very much a community, um, community project. Yeah. So when that was in my quilt show, um, I had so much fun just talking to people about it. And it actually won viewer's choice. Now at our quilts show, viewer's choice is sponsored by CQA. And that made it me eligible to send my quilt into the rosette category at CQA in Toronto. Right. Now that's the top prizes all across Canada that are um, eligible to go into that. So I thought, if I'm going into, if my quilt's hanging at CQA, the National Jury Show, yes, in a special um, category, I'm going to see it. So my, my friend Tracy at Purple Cats and I went to Toronto, had a great time taking classes, and I stocked my quilt there also. I ended up finding out more information about that quilt and the project. I had a lady that I was talking to but by my quilt, and she was from the Netherlands. Mm. She had actually done this so along with Jenica when she did it. And she said, do you want to know why, why she did this uh, so along? And I said, absolutely. So she, <clears throat> she said, her and her husband work together, and they design the logos on the back of airplanes. I didn't know that was a job. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. her job. Anyways, they challenged each other to start a blog and see who could get the most followers. Her husband was a very good photographer. So he started a photography blog and he got 20 people following him. She had thousands and thousands and thousands <laughs> of, of people that were following her. Right. So, along. so it, it's, it's just interesting how you can find out so much information from just hanging in a quilt. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, that is a fantastic quilt. So, I mean, and I admire your stamina <laughs> to, to do these I, things. I'm kind of competitive. <laughs> so <You think> <laughs> when, when the gauntlet's laid down, I have to, you have to take perform, it. right? Yeah, you don't shrink away from a challenge, do you? No. I don't, I don't. Um, so, so that quilt actually won viewer's choice in Toronto also. Well, well-deserved, well-deserved. It is a fantastic quilt, and I would love to have seen it in real life, too, as well, because it's probably more spectacular in real life than just in Well, those three-inch blocks have 18 pieces in them. Mm. I put something in every window. So I found something on printed fabric and put in every window. Wow. Um, so it, that's what kind of... Details are important to me, yeah. And it brings my quilts to another level, I, I believe. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, definitely, you know, it, you know, the, the little details do set the quilt apart, you know, yeah. and also makes it very personal, you know, it, it, it shows your style. So speaking of style, then, how would you characterize yourself as a quilter? Are you traditional, modern, freeform, experimental? Um, I always say I'm traditional, but people say you're way past traditional now. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I think I cross over. I like unique. I like one of a kind. Mm -hmm. So I try and make mine as unique and one of a kind as possible. Even if I'm doing a, a, a commercial pattern, I always have to change something. Um, like the purple elephant that I've got. I changed something in that. Um, this purple elephant is a violet craft pattern. Mm -hmm. Now, my friend Vanessa um, went to uh, Houston when this pattern was released. 
And she came home, she said, Terry, she calls me. I, I found this fabulous pattern. I said, oh, what is it? And she said, it's an elephant. And I thought, hmm, an elephant. Why would you want an elephant quilt? To myself, I didn't say that to her. <laughs> and then, um, and she said, and I'm making mine pink. And I said, oh, a pink elephant. Why would you want a pink elephant to myself? So anyways, two weeks later, I was down at her place and, and she had this finished pink elephant outside my bedroom. And I stopped and looked at it when I went to bed and I went, that's a pretty cool quilt. I like that. So I went to bed. Next morning I get up, I'm standing as she's bringing my coffee down to me. I'm standing looking at this pink elephant. She said, you want to make it, don't you? And I went, yep. And I'm <laughs> going to make mine purple. And she goes, why would you want a purple elephant? <laughs> I said, well, you have a pink one. So yeah. there's nothing you could say to me about that. Yeah, uh, really. I went home with the pattern and um, I started pulling my purple fabrics out of my stash. I have a daughter who loves purple. So I knew that the quilt would go to her because she likes purple. I decided I had been kind of looking at value and how value is important in quilting. I listened to everybody that talks about it, but I knew that I couldn't really figure it out until I actually did it. So this was going to be my value quilt. And the elephant itself has got nine different values of grays in them. If you looked at the pattern envelope, it's very modern. The pattern envelope is made with sol solid fabrics. I just found that they were too um, blocky looking because you can't transition from one value to another um, in solids very easily. <laughs> yeah in my opinion. Um, so I knew I was going to use printed fabric and I start and I knew I was going to use more than nine fabrics. I had nine categories of value. So I would just stack up um, the different values. So some of them had eight different fabrics, some had four different fabrics. And I started um, making my value um, piles. I didn't think I had enough purple. And I just happened to go up to my computer and was on a, a closed Facebook group. And somebody had just finished typing. I just pulled the purple out of my stash. I don't know why I have purple. I don't like purple. My fingers were flying to tell her I wanted her purple fabric. <laughs> and so we, she said, yep, you can have it. I said, no, let's, let's, I'm going to trade you fabric for it. You tell me how many yards of purple you got and I'll give you whatever color you want. And she wanted navy. So I said, perfect. I said to her, um, where do you live? Because she could have been all across Canada or down in the States in this group. Right. She happened to be in Black Falls, which is like a 35 minute drive from my house. <laughs> how convenient. <laughs> it was. I said to her, well, I'm coming to Red Deer. Do you want to meet at the mall? So we did. And I felt like a drug dealer passing packages back and forth <laughs> with her. her. She gave me were purple, mine were blue. And I, I've got a lifelong friend now that we, we, um, we talk all the time. Right. So well, I took all of her fabrics and I sorted them into my value piles. My sister-in-law also passed away around the time I was making that quilt. And um, she was a quilter. She didn't have a lot of stash, but one of her favorite colors was purple. So when her daughter asked if I could come and help, you know, sort through her mom's stuff, because she's not a quilter, she was going to just sell it. So she had some of her quilting buddies and, and I went over and helped. And I helped and she said, well, I want to pay you for this. I said, I don't want any money, but I want to buy every purple baggie of uh, <laughs> fabric you've got. And I did. So all of her fabric are in that quilt also. So to say a quilt has a story is an understatement for that. That's one. for sure. Definitely. Um, so. so that quilt has got lots of stories. Yeah. I well, was. It's gorgeous too. And I can see what you mean about taking it. Like some people are afraid to go out and explore things because they think they have to do it from scratch. But you know, 
if you look at a pattern and decide, well, yeah, I want to do this with it or whatever, that's being creative, I think. You know, it you're putting your potential there. You know, use the pattern as a guide. Exactly. <laughs> jump off from that. So I went from the nine colors of purple to over 50 prints in that particular yeah. elephant. I also added a pieced mouse to the bottom corner. I saw that when we were looking so at it. Yeah. Most people think it's only stitched, but it actually is paper pieced and incorporated it into the pattern. I teach that as a class and I encourage people to add something to their project that's personal to them. Yeah, I've, I've had people build their <laughs> one particular one had this beautiful gray elephant and she had this emu photo photo like poking its head out of the corner <laughs> <laughs> just as the photo was taken type yeah. of thing it I, I love it when they they're creative and and yeah. um, add their own special touch well that's yeah that's great so um there's some questions that i had given you in advance i don't think we need to go over like tools and things like that because i think actually you have already told us what some of those things are in the process of uh, talking about your quilts but um what I'd like to know is you, before we talk about your YouTube channel, I would consider you someone that other people seek out to find out how to do things. So do you seek out anybody or any websites or whatever to, to learn new things? Um, I'm always trying to learn. So I look, I look everywhere. Um, I, I, I watch YouTube. I, I see if I'm trying to figure out a new technique, I will look and see what people are doing. And then I put my own twist on it. Um, I love teaching. <laughs> and that is why I started my YouTube channel is because I love sharing um, my tips and tricks with everybody. Because I always can figure out an easier or a quicker way of doing things. Um, I used to belong to a small guild just in my local area. My job at that guild was to come with a tip or a trick or show a different tool I, as an educator, basically. Um, and I, I love teaching. It's fun. Like, I couldn't teach school, but I could sure teach quilting. <laughs> well, it's very apparent in your, your videos on your YouTube channel, and you've already asked, asked, answered one question I was going to ask you is why you started your YouTube channel, and you said you started it because you wanted to teach and share the techniques and ways to do things that make maybe make life a little easier, especially for people who are just getting into quilting, because some techniques can be very intimidating, but there's always another way to do things too. So on your YouTube channel, is that what your focus is then is education? Uh, pretty much. Um, I'm going to be, yes, I, I would say it's education and showing, uh, I've, I, I went to my guild after I had kind of posted my, my scrap one mm -hmm. and they said, Terry, you need to do more videos. I want, and they gave me a list of things they want me to teach, <laughs> like how to square up a quilt. Can you just show us how to square up a quilt? I, I don't even know where to start. So it, those type of things are, they'll be very short um, to the point. And I think, I think the YouTube channels need to be short and to the point. Nobody needs to t listen to me ramble on. <laughs> Um, they, they just need that information. And if it's 10 minutes, they can take 10 minutes and watch that over and over and over. Um, th that was the positive feedback I've gotten from my yeah. channel is you're to the point, you get the, the job done and you're out of there kind of thing. Yes. And, and as I've been watching your videos, that is one thing I really like about them. Uh, there are some YouTube channels that you never get to the project until half an hour into it and they're rambling on about things. And most people are going to YouTube with a purpose. They want to know how to do something. Let's get on with it and do it. And you definitely do present. Your style is definitely that way. And I think that is a positive. Um, is there anything else you want to tell us about your YouTube channel? I mean, how long have you had the YouTube channel? I don't think you've really been up that long. It hasn't been up to, uh, it's probably been up over a year. Now, the first reason I did it is because I've got, um, 
I've got a way of making sleeves. And I did a video because everybody asked me, how do I make my sleeves? So the sleeves themselves have kind of got a D shape in them so that when you put a rod through it, even if it's a round rod, it's behind the quilt and it's not distorting the front of the quilt. Right. Um, so I've, I've got a really good video on that. So it was always really hard to find my video on my Facebook page. So my daughter said, let's just start you up a YouTube channel and we'll put that video on there. And then when people ask, you can just shoot them a link to, to that video. And I went, okay. So we did that. And I've added a couple more, like there's a triangle sleeve on there. Um, a way that I fold my binding um, that is unique. I call it the Terry twist. And it, when you pull it out, it, it doesn't twist on you. Mm. And you don't have to kind of try and roll it on a tube. It's super fast and easy. So I've I haven't got watched that. that. I have well, not watched that one yet. I have to watch that one. <laughs> you've got to watch that one. You yeah. Know, just twist it around your fingers. And then when you pull it out, you pull it out from the middle and it it just pulls out perfectly okay that's um, definitely because i have a problem with that twisting yeah for sure so yeah so your videos are very um like yourself they're unique they're creative they're to the point and uh, i i find them absolutely fascinating i have learned so much just from what the few that i have already watched no, so it's great so this interview now has been going on for almost an hour so and i most of the questions i was going to ask you have been answered already but i have one for you i like to ask this question if you had all the money in the world is there a piece of equipment you would like to invest in not really um i do have a long arm i'm a long armor so i've got that tool yeah. in my in my tool chest um i'm not computerized I am um, hand guided, so maybe a computer, but I'm not real computer savvy. So it would probably be more frustrating than actually just jumping in there and just doing it. Um, so I would say, no, there's nothing I really need. You got it all. <laughs> I do. I yeah, do. that's true. And what's the kind, what kind of sewing machine do you have or machines? I've got several machines. So my long arm is an APQS Millie. It's an older 2015 model, no, 2005 model, sorry. Um, they're a workhorse, love yep. it. Um, I've always been a Janome girl. That's what I got for a graduation pre um, present when I graduated grade 12. My parents bought me a, an entry level Janome and within two years I had traded it in for a, a better model, which I wore out yeah. <laughs> um, totally. Like, he yes. kept yelling at me you have to buy a new machine i said you have that old one in the back just keep stealing parts <laughs> off of it like <laughs> it had no feed dogs left it would actually have grooves in some of the metal parts from the thread <laughs> going through it i i used it to death um so i've i've got a 9450 janome now um i just finished buying a juki mm. Um, just for heavier bag type making. Right. Um, I've got a featherweight just for fun. And I've got a FAF travel machine because Janome didn't have a travel machine mm. that had the features on it I wanted. Right. Um, that was light enough. And so those are the machines I use. Well, you have quite a variety of machines. And I am a Janome person as well. That's what I have. And I have several Janomes. And I do have an APQS. Mine's a Lucy because um, yeah. I couldn't get anything bigger in my house uh, at the time. But uh, but I do have the computerized part on it because unlike you, I don't really enjoy doing free motion quilting on my own, but I enjoy computer technology. So that's where I lean with, with all of that. But um, And what about your sewing area? I, I'm assuming you're sitting in your sewing area. I'm not, I'm actually at my daughter's house. Oh. Um, I was having, com we're having computer problems at mine, oh. trying to get enough um, internet. I don't know, I don't oh. know what it's all called. Yeah. So I'm at my daughter's house. Okay. So we've got this fake wall built here. <laughs> um, I was gonna say I was, that, 
you know, it looks like a set. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, when you first came on, I looked at this. Wow, we're prepared. Uh, we've got a set and everything going. So, what how, what is your sewing area when you are in your sewing area? Is it just a, uh, a like an extra bedroom in your house, or do you have a dedicated area that? So there, there's a there's a joke that goes around the computer or on the online, and it says um, the quilter says, "I have all my houses in a box," mm. and the husband says. Don't call our house a box. <laughs> um, I, I've i pretty much taken over our house. Um, so I sew in half of my basement, which is a, a 15 by 30 uh, foot, 15 feet by 30 feet room. Good size. Um, yeah, so it's lined with shelves and those shelves are lined with fabric. Yeah. So it's well insulated in my basement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I have two of my machines down there. My main um, Janome and my Juki is downstairs. And then directly above me in the old living room, because we were in a, oh gosh, it's got to be a 70, 80 year old house now. Um, we renovated the one end, took the whole east wall out and and redid my kitchen, added another bathroom with four girls. We needed the one. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we've got a, a big room over top of a built on garage, which is our family room now. So I was able to take the living room, um, the old living room, and that's my long arm room. So my long arm is in there. It's tight, but it, it's yeah. in there. <laughs> Yeah, but if it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So those are kind of my two main areas uh, of the house that are, are inhabited with my stuff. Yeah, well, it sounds like you've got a nice setup for all of that. And I'm sure there's lots of people that are just envious of that. They're probably still working on their dining room table. Nothing wrong with that. You make do with what you've got, you know. I, I, I do that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we all do. So um, before I finish up the interview, and this has been absolutely great, and I love seeing your quilts, and I know everybody else is going to love seeing those quilts too. Do you have any advice for anyone who might want to get into this art form because to me quilting is art i agree i believe it is art too but i wouldn't want to tell somebody it's art that Why? is just it, that is just beginning because they could be like me when i started quilting i you know i made quilts they're they're not artful in by any means and it took me a long time to, to actually call myself a quilt artist. Um, and it's only been in the last five years that I've really believed that what I do is art now. Um, so I don't think I would tell them it's art at the beginning, but right. I would encourage them to try it. Start, start simply with you know squares and, and putting them together and build your, build your um, techniques one at a time. Right. So don't don't jump into a Judy Niemeyer and, and expect to to master it. Start small um, and and build. I've got a girlfriend that um, kind of started quilting oh, probably about five years ago, and she comes and she says, "Okay, I, what do I do?" I said, "Just start with squares." Then you know, after she's done a couple square quilts, let's try half square triangles. Oh, I can't do those. Yes, you can. <laughs> And, and just build on it from there. Yeah. She, she does beautiful work and her, like, I rival at how she does her binding. It's absolutely magnificent. So just start small and, and, yeah. and enjoy the process. Don't be, don't be afraid to, to try new techniques no. when you're ready for them. I think that's excellent advice. And I think for a lot of people, when they first get into quilting, they're very intimidated because they see all of these beautiful, beautiful works of art and they go, well, I can never do that. Well, as you said, start small, build on what you learn. And eventually one day you'll wake up and you'll go, wow, I made that. And that is fantastic. So I, I think this quilt is changing people's lives. Yeah, because it's very um, doable. It's and very doable. It's one little block. Like yeah. it's not hard. 
and you don't have to be precise. That's what I wanted to really instill on people in those videos. Yes, I gave some guidance on sizes only because people couldn't get past, I, I, I don't know where to start. Yeah. Start here, but let your, your, your scraps talk to you. Like I just take hunks out and sew them together and trim them off. I keep all of the, the leftovers, like anything I trim off is, is um, being saved for another purpose or for another block. Um, yeah. And it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. And it it's should fun. be fun. You know, you're not supposed to feel stressed with this. this is supposed to be a stress buster. So, you know, don't get uptight. It's only fabric. It's only thread, you know, and you'll create something that you can be proud of for sure. Well, I want to thank you so much for uh, doing this interview with me. I found uh, your creations fascinating. I find you fascinating. Your YouTube channel is wonderful. So I will put the link to your YouTube channel in the show notes below this interview uh, when it goes up. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for doing this, Terry. And don't stay, do stay on the line after I finish the, the recording part. Uh, but thank you again. This is really nice of you to do this. Thank you. Uh, are you also going to put um, my Facebook and my Instagram? Yes, I will. The... yes, I will. And actually, if I well, I'll talk to you about that after the recording. But yes, I'll put all your social media links down there too, so people can uh, find you where in whatever form they want to. So once again, thank you so much. And thank you so much, Stephen, for having me. It's been it's been exhilarating. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>